How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this episode of Scantober, we're gonna be taking a look at the mobile scanning app Clone. Clone is a really interesting app that has some features that make it a little bit different than most of the other scanning apps on the market. It's primarily aimed at making textured AR models, which is really interesting, but can we use it for 3D printing? That's what we're gonna dive into in this video. Clone is available on the iOS App Store and on Google Play, so you can use it with Android or iOS. The way that Clone has priced their app sort of reminds me of 1990s shareware, which is a system that I happen to really like. Basically, you can take as many scans as you like, but if you want to view them in AR or export the mesh for 3D printing, you have to pay a one-time fee to upgrade your software to premium. At the time of this video, the cost of the app is $30, but they occasionally run specials, and I bought it when it was only $15. If you're going to be using this app frequently, then I think that's a pretty fair price considering some of the tools this app has. However, if you're just interested in getting into 3D scanning and trying to make meshes, you're probably better off sticking with a free alternative. For this video, I'm going to be scanning and printing this Halloween skull decoration. The first thing we have to do to use Clone is print out the calibration mat. You can download this mat for free on their site, and the Clone app uses it to calibrate the camera's position relative to the model. I printed out the Clone mat on a piece of copy paper, and one of the things I noticed was it didn't really sit very flat. So considering this is being used to calibrate the overall scan, I decided to tape it down flat using some clear tape just to hold down the corners and sides to give it a more even surface. This worked really well, and it solved some of the early problems I had getting the camera to recognize the mat. Once it's been taped down flat, you can start the scanning process. You can tape this mat down to a table and walk around it, but I found the best results that I got were after I taped the mat to a Lazy Susan and rotated that instead of the camera. Once everything's in place, we can go ahead and start the scan. The process is pretty easy, and all we have to really do is make sure that the dome turns blue, and then we slowly work our way around in circles. I got the best results from this app by keeping the camera stationary and putting the object I was scanning on the textured mat on top of a Lazy Susan. It takes about three full revolutions to get a good scan, and once you get to the top it's a little bit tricky, I had some trouble with the tripod getting the right angle, so I wound up just holding it. This worked fine, and it still captured the scan. Once the last piece of the AR dome has been scanned, you'll notice it disappears and Clone goes into a processing mode. Oddly enough, the scan that I took had a conical shape at the top that came to a point. I'm not entirely sure what caused this deformation, but it's visible in the texture and the mesh. So to get a more accurate geometry, Clone will let you take a second scan and then merge the two. I repeated the same process as before, putting the camera on a tripod and putting my object being scanned on top of a mat on top of the Lazy Susan, and did another scan. This process was identical to the first time, just requiring me to go in a full circle all the way around the model and then complete the scan. With a little bit of automation, I'm sure you could build a robot that moved the camera into the right positions over the Lazy Susan. It would be a fun project, and I think it would give you more consistent results. For this video, I'm just going to do everything manually. So, same as before, once the scan is finished, you'll notice it goes into a processing mode, and this time the first thing it does is it starts modifying the mesh, and you'll notice it starts changing the overall shape before reducing it down to the size that we were originally looking for. Once the merging process is complete, we're left with our final mesh, and just from looking at it, it looks really good. I'm really happy with the texture, and I can scroll around and see all of the sprue marks and mold lines from the original, so it did capture a lot of detail. Now, if you're using the free version of Clone, this is as far as you can really go with the model. In order to edit or see the model in AR, you need to upgrade to the paid version. I was interested to see what I could do with this app, so I paid to upgrade to premium. Moving into the AR mode, we can actually place the model in AR onto a surface, and it's really cool seeing it next to the original. There are all kinds of paint imperfections and minor dings to the plastic in the original model, and it's really cool seeing the AR model and comparing them side by side. You really get a sense for the quality of the scan. For anyone making video game assets, this strikes me as a really fast way to get that texture information into the game engine. The premium version of Clone also includes a few different editing modes, so you can edit the texture, the shape of the mesh, or the actual triangle count. Because I'm interested in 3D printing this model, the very first thing I did was take a look at the mesh, and you can see it looks pretty good. We have the option to decimate if we want to make a low poly mesh, but that's not really what we're going for in this video. It's cool to know it's there though. 
The real powerful tool for 3D printing is this bump map button, and that will take the color from the texture and apply it to the mesh as a displacement. This creates very accurate looking models, and you can repeat that process to get more detail. Clone also has mesh editing tools built directly into the software. This lets you go through and push and pull on the mesh to get rid of things like small dents or bumps. It's a very quick and easy way to make a mesh look a little bit more realistic and also to address any problem spots that may have been caused by the lighting on the model. Things like small defects caused by lighting can be easily addressed before sending the mesh off to a program like Mesh Mixer to prepare it for 3D printing. Once we're happy with our mesh, we can go to the Export tab, and this is where we have our options for export. In addition to the mesh and texture carrying file formats, you can also create a GIF or a video of the object rotating, or a still image of the object you captured. Because I'm going to be 3D printing this model, I'm going to export an STL and bring it into Mesh Mixer, and you can see it looks just like it did on the mesh screen in the app. Overall, it looks pretty sharp, and I'm pleased with the quality of the mesh. I'm a little bit concerned the model doesn't have a flat base for 3D printing, so I'm going to use the plane cut tool in Mesh Mixer to create a flat, level base so I have something nice and even to begin my print with. Once that process is finished, I can send it off to Prusa Slicer to prepare for 3D printing. When I'm looking at the mesh, it looks pretty good, I don't see any major problem spots aside from some areas that might need support, and when I go into the toolpath preview, again, everything here looks pretty good and there aren't any hidden surprises. So from here, we're ready to send this file off to the 3D printer. And now we have our 3D printed skull. It looks very similar to the original, and you can even see some of the defects in the original are present in the finished model. One of the cool features of Clone is that we can actually compare in the Clone app the original skull the 3D printed skull, and then an AR representation of our scan. So it's pretty cool seeing the three side by side. Clone is a great way to create textured models for use in AR applications. It also has a lot of cool features that make it a great fit for 3D printing, primarily the bump map displacement. Being able to create a bump map texture displacement on a 3D model makes it a really, really powerful app if you're trying to capture a lot of detail, especially if it's on black and white models. As always, Thanks for watching and have fun scanning.